Welcome back to Daybreak. We continue to get inspired by our guests here today, great Kenyans, and shortly they'll be sharing the secrets of their, uh, to their, of their success, how they've done what they've done. And we want to know from you, who is an inspiration to you in your community, in your village? And we already have started receiving some messages, so keep talking to us. 22422 is the SMS line. Use the hashtag Daybreak. You can also call in. The essential digits are 0719 We'll run them just underneath your screen so that you don't miss them. You can call in and send a shout out, like we mentioned earlier on. This is only your chance to Masalamu, to someone who's doing something in the village, away from the politicians and away from all the doom and gloom on the newspapers, someone who's creating an impact in their own small way. It doesn't have to be a multi-million shilling impact, nope. just in their own small way, creating an impact where you are. We'd like to sample some of them. All right, let's understand a little bit more about our, our panelists here today. Nice coming back to you. She's a global ambassador with AMREF and also last part of last year's list of Time 100 Most Influential People. Nice, let me find out from you. What gave you the courage to go against tradition, to go against elders, to go against years of doing something in one particular direction. Mm -hmm. You came in and said, I want to go the other direction. Yeah. How? I think the courage came from, uh, I will say, at least the people who supported me. Okay. Because for me to be where I am today, it's because my grandfather and my sister, you know, sacrificed themselves and, you know, they supported me throughout my journey. But more, I will say it's because of the pain I've seen. Because if you talk of death because of female circumcision, I've seen it from this community that I'm coming from. Girls missing school because once they are circumcised, they don't have an opportunity to get their education. Uh, they are married off at that early mm. young age. So I've seen them missing school and all that. More, I've seen the pain they have undergone. So through uh, the series of events I've seen undergoing, that's why I decided I don't have to do something else. You know, I can stand up for the rights of girls. You know, I can talk to communities because remember, uh, I'm not forcing them to change. Were well, you I considered a rebel? Yeah. At some point, yes, yes, but I never gave up. I think that also toughened me up because remember, there's resistance, especially from men. Remember, girls are mar uh, circumcised because they are men who are waiting to marry them. Mm. So if they are in school, it means that their marriage will be delayed and these men will not have people to marry at that time and all that. But uh, I think in my work, I don't just talk to women and girls. I involve men. I make sure that they understand why are we saying that the cut is wrong. You know, why, why do we need to keep our girls in school the same way we are keeping boys? So by using the holistic approach, by engaging men, they also felt like they are part of that change. And that's why uh, we say nowadays we don't fight that much. But at least there are places whereby I still meet a lot of resistance because accepting change is not easy. It, it takes a lot of time. It takes time. Yeah. How, how are you bridging that divide? Because you just mentioned that the women are being uh, they're undergoing FGM because they are men who are ready to yeah. marry them. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, you're saying that you're trying to empower the boy child also. It's not yeah. just the girl child. Yeah. These are the same men who are thinking she's the one who's taking away our women. Mm -hmm. How do you again bridge that divide so that they feel that it's it's an interconnected mm -hmm. strengthening mm -hmm. of a community rather? than individuals? Uh, how we start doing our forums, remember again, putting men and women together in one sitting is never easy. You know, there are words that you can't, they are not respectful per se, if you say in front of both women and men. You know, maybe women will not be comfortable, or men will not be comfortable. So you so have what separate we try, sessions? What we, yes, so what we try to do is put them separately. We have what we call the mother to girl forum, whereby mothers and their daughters sit down together and discuss these issues. We have the father to son forum, whereby men and their sons, you know, sit down together. We have the cultural leaders, and we also have uh, the church leaders, because again, they are again very influential people in this community. So once we talk to them and have conversations, and then after a few years, we feel like now the dialogue is open, we bring them and we put them together. Yeah. Both men and women, we discuss these issues because again there is a problem when you talk to them separately mm. because men will keep on saying it's women who are for a practice women will say it's men who want their daughters or want game. their wives to be circumcised and all that and i think by bringing them down together we were able to you know address it and uh, i think it became easy that way but then again that said remember it's not just about talking about female genital mutilation or child marriage. Yeah. There are many other forms of sexual and uh, gender-based violence per se. And remember, we have communities whereby wife beating is still going on. Mm. You know, if you don't beat your wife, it's like you, you don't love her and My all goodness. that. What does, what does that tell you? It means that we don't have to, for, to wait for the younger boys 
to be grown men for us to start talking to them. Because remember, their fathers are their role models. Mm -hmm. So there is an importance of starting to talk to them from, their, uh, from that young age mm -hmm. so that they understand that these are their sisters, you know, these are their friends, they need to protect them. Because in this community, again, we cannot assume the position of male leadership. They make all the decisions, they decide. What if these boys are empowered to save their sisters, to tell their parents, it's not okay for my sister to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. It's not okay for my sister to be married at that early young age. And in future, again, they'll be fathers, mm -hmm. you know, they'll be having daughters, they'll be married to these women. Yes. So what uh, it means that it's important for us to raise these boys when they understand that we are not just women, you know, we're human beings, and we need to be treated the same. Okay, yeah. well, I'll be coming back to you to get an idea of your future plans. But Mudira, let me come back to you. 2017, you made a bold move. Some would say almost foolish. You decided to, you know, take part in politics in Kenya, which already is a bold move in itself, uh, bearing in the nature of our politics. But you decided to become someone's running mate. When you think back about that time, what are your reflections? Do you laugh and think, what was I thinking? No, that or hindsight is 2020. 2020. Actually, I would tell you, right now I would be pinching myself if I didn't do it. Okay. Because what I know now, I wouldn't have had an opportunity to know. Oftentimes, we citizens sit back and imagine that our leaders have all the solutions that we need. Yes. By coming forth and standing, actually, a story that's not told is that I was not initially running as a running mate. I think you were, you were looking for a presidential ticket first. I was running for president. I thought it was a rumor. It was true. It was true. Okay. But then... At 35 or at 34 years old. I was ripe and I believe that Kenya was ripe for the change that needs to happen. Mm. But then IBC was right in front of me. They barred me from running for president. Because of age? They never gave a substantive reason. They gave out a list, final list, and my name was not on the list. Okay. So I got back to one of the candidates with whom I had established rapport, and we teamed up mm. and worked together. And thankfully, I got an opportunity to showcase to Kenyans as to what I am about. Now, as I was saying, having run in that election, having sat across the table with the people who make the decisions that run this nation, I realized that we as citizens should become conscious of the fact that we delegate our power to people who sometimes do not exactly know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't be confident in saying that if I had not run in that election. Okay. I'll be fair to you. I'll give you a chance to finish that <coughs> statement immediately after we pick up a Jacob. Call. Jacob from Moy University. Let me come back to you with your honor. Jacob, come in. What's your question or comment this morning? I have a question. Good morning, Trevor. Yes, good morning, Jacob. Yeah, I've got an inspiration from one lady by the name Lengete. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's she's nice. actually an inspiration to the community of the Maasai. All right. Yeah. Then there's also this person who does the transformation of uh, the society uh, in the refugee setups. This is uh, Dr. Njo, who works with um, the Window International Kenya. Okay. Yeah, he's actually an inspiration. He transforms the society through education. So actually, that person has inspired me so much. Okay. And I will wish them well. Thank you, Jacob. That's okay. Jacob from Mo University. A shout out to you, nice, and to Dr. Njo. Dr. Njo. Yeah. All right. Carry on. We yes. Interrupted you briefly. And so, the other plus that I was looking to gain through the same was to inspire young people and other people who feel able to lead to come out of their comfort zone and offer themselves for election because that's the only way we can improve the quality of leadership in Kenya. Okay. And thankfully, enough people stood for office. Okay. Some of them got elected. Others fell by the wayside. That's right. But then they are regrouping, and I'm sure in 2022 and in other elections that will come after that, more young people will come forth. What would you I tell someone like Trevor with the 
you know what people are watching and some of them are thinking maybe i can play a role in my community but politics seems so dirty so expensive what would you tell them well in kenya it's true that politics is dirty <laughs> but then someone has to clean it and it can't be the same dirty people playing it right now which means if we want hygiene then the clean <laughs> people who are out there must come into this space and bring that hygiene that's so much required what do you make of the performance of the people who you had hope in? I'm sure you had some hope in some young people who are running, and some of them were elected. Are you happy with their performance? A lot of them are a disappointment. I wish I could give names, but then because they're not here to defend themselves, right. I will refrain from doing that. But then let's not use the young people who have disappointed as the benchmark to gauge all the other young people leadership out of young there. people generally yes uh -huh. Uh -huh. as you can see there are young people in this panel today and they're doing a marvelous work out mm. there with very limited resources with very limited support that's right okay. but they're making a difference all right i've told you that i'm interacting with young people across the nation okay. through sports and every day i meet people who want to create an impact in society and as I help them connect with their purpose and know what their civic duty is mm. and their role in society is, I believe that as a nation, the sky is not even the limit. All right. Don't do so much more. There's another caller we have online, <coughs> Raphael from Kuali. Raphael, good morning. Who inspires you in Kuali? Good morning. Morning. Yes. Yes, uh, I think uh, one of the best debates we have in this country is such a kind of debate when I wake up in the morning and uh, we are seeing the reality of the nation. And, uh, you know, when I see Muturi, my, my career speaking on television this morning, yes. I feel like, wow, God, we are not doomed as I think. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, what I've just seen this morning is like uh, Kenya is full of life. Yeah. But there's a big rock on top of this life that is stopping it from sprouting. Mm. Uh, when, when, when you look at the, the debate going around this country, it's a debate around money. And the money is with the few individuals who are actually, when you look at their leadership, is not there. Okay. But when you look at Carriera speaking, I was just thinking about if Carriera was the president of this country, then we could not be talking about a housing, a housing scheme yeah. of over five billion whereby the person in of preparing the money will only pay a fine of 10,000. I think Karyana cannot allow that. Okay. I'm well inspired by the way, by the morning show, All right. that we should be bringing such a kind of minds on our television All right. and ventilate. Because I now see that this country in the next five, six years, we are going to go in a very right direction. Thank but you, let me tell you, let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. From Kuala County, yes. where I speak and where I, 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 I work from, yeah. I am very much, very, very much inspired by the leadership of Kuala County. Okay. Because they seem to have put everything right. All right. To an extent that there is very little corruption in the account of Kuala. Okay. Thanks, Rafael. That's Rafael calling in from Kuala, of course, saying he's inspired by the people in the Kuala County and also the people he sees here. B Major, what is, your, what, what is the plan going forward? Are we building an institution for our veterans? What's happening? <laughs> The plan going forward is that there is going to be an interruption of the current reality. The current reality being that uh, military uh, veterans and their families disappear into oblivion where their life expectancy is limited and their experience is completely uh, um, cut off. So what um, you should expect to see is a collective and holistic care of these very, very important people, myself included. I mm. will never leave myself out of the equation. I was telling you earlier that I think if it wasn't for my profession and for people in my profession who actually supported me through, um, you know, the, the, the effect of, of, of my work to my mental health, I would be like every other military veteran. And that is one experience that cannot be explained away, that cannot be excused away. What happened, happened, and I'm here right now. And what I can do 
is honor that experience by ensuring that everything I can do, I do. Yeah. Yes. So people how, don't understand. No, go, ahead. go ahead. How widespread is the issue? How many veterans do you think are out there, need help, don't have finances, need some sort of support? So but let me tell you. Do like, you have any numbers? Um, Kahiga, I can't give you numbers. But I can uh, give you from a time span perspective. When we think about military veterans from the beginning of uh, our military, we are not just talking about Operation Linda Inchi. Of course, Operation Linda Inchi is important because there is no time in the history of our Kenyan military that they are, we've gone to war, essentially. So in a manner like this. In, in a manner like this. So mm. of course, there is no time as this that has happened before that we've had so many soldiers becoming military veterans before they are even 25, mm. before they are even 30, you see? We, there hasn't been a time where so many uh, women, wives, have become widows when they have children who are not even two years old. Mm. Some are even pregnant, you see? There hasn't been such a time. But military veterans have been in existence as old as our military is. And uh, they've just been small pockets and people just tolerate it, people suffer through it, and people just say, you know, c'est la vie. That is life. Mm. Okay, Douglas, even as Douglas comes in, Douglas, what, what's the future now for you? How do you top what you've been through in 2018 um, and still continue to help people as you have? Now, at the moment, we, uh, we have received support from GFC and we're expanding. So um, we, we have a, a really nice space where uh, with state of art uh, uh, computers and everything. And so we, uh, this year, that's what we'll be, uh, we'll be concentrating with. Uh, ensuring that uh, uh, we know we, we are more young men and women, uh, they have their skills for sustainable livelihood. So okay. that, that's that's our that's our major uh, major goal for this year. Major goal for this year. You're not the first Kenyan to receive donor funding. You're not the first Kenyan to win awards. But sometimes a sad narrative comes in: the issue of accountability. <coughs> Someone who started a project like this one with a lot of you know lofty goals, yeah. but once the dollars and the pounds start coming in, man, it tracing that money uh, becomes an issue. <laughs> what? Become a Kenyan. What? <laughs> you, 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 you become a Kenyan. <laughs> oh, that's a very sad expression. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sad way to think. But it's, it's, so, what are you doing to ensure that five or ten years from now, the name of Oasis? Madare mm -hmm. still is as powerful as it is right now. First of all, let me say that uh, I started with Madare. Actually, I use um, you know my, my savings to up to even before you receiving the uh, receiving okay. the award and, 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 and support. So, but um, you know because it's a it's a youth led. You have seen so many youth led, but um, the chairman, you know, the, 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 the treasurer is they 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 above seventy or something of you know. So my model is that. Um, uh, I have very young men and women who are in my board and uh, have really vibrant uh, staffs. So 35, I'll, I'll, I'll move away from Oasis Madare and give other guys uh, opportunity so that at least it can, it can continue. Okay, yeah, you can, you, can you know, you can't, new ideas. Very true, yeah. You can't say that you, you, you know, it's a youth organization and, and Bado, you're a Mugabe, yeah. you're still there and, and you have other young men you know, who have really fresh ideas to, to take... Um, Whatever you are doing to a notch higher, but still, Bado, you're still there. So yeah. my model is that 35, I'll, I'll step out. You'll become a veteran. I, I'll become a vet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll become okay. a veteran. All right, we, we are running out of time here, but I want to give you guys 30 seconds each to just give a final thought and maybe just one line of what people should do out there. An inspiration of some sorts. We start with you, 30 seconds. Already at 25 seconds now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my inspiration is uh, uh, start small and, and think big. And okay. just start small and think big and... Uh, you never know what to do. Uh, while starting with mother, I never, it was not in my idea that, uh, it was no, never in my thought that I'll, maybe I'll, I'll receive some recognition, okay. some support. I was doing it willingly. Actually, I was doing it, I, I was really angry okay. to, you know, uh, to have this change that I want. All right, okay. start small, think big, major. Um, <clears throat> I think, um, wow, 30 seconds. Yeah, 25. Don't be <laughs> afraid to clear the bush even if you're the first one. Okay. Don't be afraid that you don't know the end of that story. Mm. Um, ground yourself in spirituality because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that will support and stand for you as everybody else tells you to conform, everybody else calls you crazy, everybody else calls you idol. And just move forward every day with gratitude. Okay. okay. Yes. Don't be afraid to clear the bush. Yes. When you're the first that means don't follow the beaten path. Create your own path. Create even your own if path. there's a bush. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Udiora. It always seems impossible until it's done. 
we can house Kenyans in a better way, feed them as we ought to, give them a higher quality of life. But currently, the people miss advising the government and the president. I'm praying for them to do a better job. Okay. On this levy about housing, it's a scheme where the tagline should read, we'll take your money and run. My goodness. <laughs> That's what you believe. <laughs> Okay. okay. But is, that, is that your parting shot? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> is that your mood inspiration? <laughs> my inspiration <laughs> yeah. bit is, as I said before, find your purpose. Yeah. Live true to it. Kenya is a great country. We are doing great things. Do that which you can, wherever you are. Okay. Okay. That's mm. a better one. That's <laughs> find your purpose and live. But he sent a message, nevertheless, yeah. out there. <laughs> there is a lot of dis dissatisfaction with the housing levy fund. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we can all make change in different ways. I always tell people you don't need an office or you know funds from donors and all that for you to make change in your communities. But you can always start small from uh, from in, from you know to by by doing any cause that you believe in. And lastly, also uh, I think I would urge people to really uh, get involved on their work. Now we need to really give a lot of focus on female genital mutilation issues and child marriage, because right now with the constitution, we have a lot of cross-border, Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, uh, uh, Ethiopia, and Kenya, and all that. So I think what we've been lacking again is political support. So I urge all politicians, don't really be afraid of speaking about it because I know they are always scared of losing votes. It's a cultural issue and mm -hmm. all that. But I think if they don't speak about it, who else will do so? Who else will do so? Yeah. Would you ever be a politician yourself one day? Um, future plans, I don't know. Now I'm really focused on working on my book, but also putting up a leadership academy for the girls called Perfect. A Nice Place uh, that will be really nurturing younger girls, mentoring them on leadership skills, wow. you know, economic empowerment for the women and girls. But you never know, maybe in future, I don't know. You I might join know. in you know, a, it's nice a retirement a nice plan. Place. A nice place. It's a retirement plan when you're Rhymes 70 or When you're <laughs> 70 or 60. And then after that, you can die if really. <laughs> and of course, you in 2022, Are I can only imagine. Well, in 2022, depending on my campaign at this moment to try and change the mindset of Kenyans, mm. if God sees us till then, I will make a decision. But what I'm urging young people is to invade the parties and ensure that they change status quo so these parties do not belong to individuals. Okay. Okay. Kenya is a great nation. We have great leaders. They mean well. Okay. But we have to hold them to account. Hold them to account. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have some SMSs and yes. tweets. Let's put them Let's up on the screen Let's read them now. before we wrap up. 224222, of course, the first one is there. Command our ardent viewer. Okay, he says, I draw lots of inspiration from some young trainers I work with who, despite the challenges they go through, because of the nature of their employment, still find the heart to wake up every morning and do their job anyway. Even when many of our leaders continue looting our economy, these young people are blinded by hope. Kudos, guys. All right. Hats wow. off to them, by the way. They Thank wake you up every morning and work despite the gloomy doom headlines. Kinyanjui. Daybreak, don't forget Susan Achieng from Madare of Inua Kike, who takes mm. disadvantaged girls back to school. Learned about her through the media. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Shout out to Susan Achieng as well. Still have more SMSs coming through. Alvin Musamali from BGM. Bungoma. Bungoma. Thank you, Trevor, for that. Another mm -hmm. person who has inspired me is my mom, who worked hard as a laborer in, lo in a local factory to ensure we were properly educated. I celebrate you, Mom. Okay, that All personal right. touch. Thank Alden you. Alvin Samali's mom, shout out to you as well. And we have David Juma. Pastor Moses Omondi started Echoes of Mercy Mission with a school where he supports the vulnerable children and pay their high school fees. He started Widow's Voices that provides both food and housing to over 300 widows. Echoes wow. of Mercy Church is really impacting lives. Shout out there to Pastor right. Moses Omondi. Okay, I think last SMS before we get into tweets. Don't give us your name, but you say we have the Nubian Rights Forum, which empowers the marginalized minorities with challenges in ID cards, passports in chapter three of the constitution based in libra led kibra. by kibra yes thank you led by shafi who's a petitioner in the names <laughs> as well okay okay thank Do you standing up for the rights of, yes. of others <laughs> absolutely now let's check out your tweets amos papa says life has value so long as one attributes value to the life of others that's a nice way of putting it mm -hmm. by means of love friendship 
indignation and compassion the way Nice Nailante is doing to our Maasai community. Congratulations to her. All right, she has had another. it live yes. in studio. Yes. Okay, another tweet. Omino Joseph, it's sad that our heroes and veterans, late and alive, are not being honored well. We are enjoying the fruits of their hard work. Let's be compassionate. You have a picture. Okay, right, let's see let's that see attached that. photo. There's a picture there coming through. That's a picture from way back in time. Yeah. yeah. Trying to quite understand the, 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 the con connection with that. Still not getting it very well. Okay. We'll okay. See. All right. And uh, that's this text, the tweet from Omino Joseph. Let's see another one. Jonte. Today I want to big up the one and only activist in Kenya is an inspiration to many and always there for Wanjiku when the government hits Wanjiku under the belt. <laughs> <laughs> Okia Omdata. He was here sometimes back. He was here he number one late year. last week. Yes. <laughs> the defender, the defender of Wanjiku when Wanjiku. the government hits under the belt. <laughs> Can I say defender thank you to you chief. guys as well? Oh, oh thank right. you. Thank you to you guys as well for changing the narratives maybe i'm going to start watching tv because wow. the truth is Citizen there, TV. yes there thank are a lot of kenyans <laughs> who are doing amazing things get on your bike i always say travel mm. around kenyans will amaze you mm. walk out into places you usually wouldn't go if you're driving kenyans will amaze you so this isn't the only thing i about don't Kenya. believe that it is and that's okay. why i don't bother We're because i know the, the story north. out there is different yeah everybody has to find their true north <laughs> find your true north <laughs> find your true north all right time for that right. break now yes willis raburu and zinzi need to usher us into the next session so we are merging in the level up friday in the breakfast that's tips. right so there'll be a lot of music a lot of breakfast a lot of eating we do the eating mostly and others yeah. dancing yes you are welcome you are welcome and uh, you at home are also welcome <laughs> <laughs> if you can make it in time <laughs> where you are. welcome by uh, sms or, or 22422 or, or, or uh, social media we'll be yeah. right back <laughs>